Episodic ataxia is an autosomal dominant genetic disorder which causes sporadic bouts of severe discoordination. The disorder is often induced by stress, startle, or strong emotions. As we will learn, the second type of episodic ataxia can also be provoked by coffee and alcohol consumption. Symptoms can appear as early as infancy. As you see here, episodic ataxia can be diagnosed by several symptoms. A few of these symptoms and signs include continuous tremors of motor function, vertigo, seizures, and diplopia. Nystagmus, or involuntary eye movements, is also a common sign of episodic ataxia. This patient displays both discoordination of motor function and seizures. There are two types of episodic ataxias, denoted as type 1 and type 2. Type 1 is characterized by an improper regulation of Purkinje cells, while type 2 is caused by a more direct malfunction of these cells. Let's have a more detailed look at the common brain structure affiliated with episodic ataxia. The cerebellum, the region of the brain which plays an important role in the integration of sensory perception, coordination, and motor control has been found to be the underlying structure involved in regulating the symptoms of episodic ataxia. More specifically, the inhibitory input into Purkinje cells is altered by mutations in channels expressed in basket cells and interneurons innervating these cells. As a result of these channel mutations, motor output from the cerebellum is distorted by prolonged action potentials. Due to its genetic correlations, episodic ataxia onset can occur in early adolescence and persist throughout a patient's life. The duration of attacks varies with respect to the type of episodic ataxia, type 1 or type 2. As mentioned before, episodic ataxia is characterized by mutations in channels expressed in basket cells and interneurons that form GABAergic synapses on Purkinje cells. Type 1 episodic ataxia is caused by mutations of the KCNA1 gene encoding the voltage-gated potassium channel, KV1.1. There are currently 17 mutations associated with episodic ataxia type 1. The red dots represent 15 of these 17 known mutations. These mutations result in drastic alterations in the KV1.1 channel functions. Specifically, a decrease in KV1.1 mediated current leads to prolonged action potentials in interneurons and basket cells. Since these cells are important in regulating Purkinje cell activity, mutations in KV1.1 channels result in increased inhibitory input into Purkinje cells and disrupted cell firing and sporadic cerebellum output. Unlike type 1 episodic ataxia, type 2 is caused by mutations of the CACNA1A gene, which encodes the voltage-gated calcium channel CAV2.1. These channels are expressed in Purkinje cells of the cerebellum, where they are involved in coupling action potentials with neurotransmitter release. Moreover, type 2 episodic ataxia is diagnosed with symptoms similar to those of type 1, such as vertigo, nystagmus, and progressive cerebellar atrophy. However, unlike type 1 episodic ataxia, which lasts seconds to minutes, type 2 lasts from hours to days. There are currently 19 mutations associated with episodic ataxia type 2. However, only two of these mutations have been characterized electrophysiologically. These mutations result in decreased current through the CAV 2.1 calcium channels resulting in abnormal neurotransmitter release in neuronal synapses innervating the Purkinje cells. Acetazolamide, which is also known as Dimox, can be orally or intravenously administered to reduce the frequency and severity of episodic attacks. 
It is speculated that Dimox acts by altering the intracellular and intercellular pH levels. These alterations affect the voltage-gated channel's activities. Annual neurological examinations should also be administered to monitor the severity of episodic ataxia in suspected victims. These examinations should be especially used to monitor individuals with high risks for carrying the genes encoding episodic ataxia. Finally, current research is focused on identifying all of the mutations specific to type 1 and type 2 episodic ataxia. Potassium and calcium channel blockers are also being tested as potential suppressants of the symptoms associated with episodic ataxia, type 1 and type 2. I hope you have had an in-depth overview of the causes and physiological mechanisms underlying both types of episodic ataxia. This pressing neurological disorder is of particular interest to modern neurophysiology. Electrophysiological experiments of the potassium and calcium channels affiliated with episodic ataxia can help clinical treatment of this genetic disorder.